employee training is an essential component of an effective stormwater pollution prevention program. This training presentation is specifically designed to increase your understanding of the importance of preventing contamination of the stormwater runoff from your industrial facilities. The training also presents ways that you can be involved at your facility. The role you play at your facility is extremely important in protecting the valuable water resources we all enjoy. Let's begin with a brief overview of water quality issues, especially where they relate to precipitation and runoff. From a raging stream during spring snowmelt to a gentle summer rain, to the slow movement of water through the ground, water is in constant motion. The movement and endless recycling of water between the atmosphere, the land surface, and underground aquifers is called the hydrologic cycle. This movement, driven by the energy of the sun and the force of gravity, supplies the water needed to support life. Understanding the hydrologic cycle is basic to understanding all water and is a key to the proper management of water resources. Many processes work together to keep the Earth's water moving in a cycle. There are five processes at work in the hydrologic cycle. Condensation, precipitation, infiltration, runoff, and evapotranspiration. These occur simultaneously and except for precipitation, continuously. Stormwater and runoff are part of this natural hydrologic process. Under natural conditions, the majority of rainwater that falls to the ground infiltrates the ground or evaporates. However, industrial activities can alter natural drainage patterns and add pollutants to rainwater and snowmelt. The introduction of pollutants to stormwater most commonly occurs when industrial facilities allow operating procedures and industrial materials to become exposed to stormwater. This potentially contaminated stormwater may then flow over the ground and enter our lakes, rivers, streams, and wetlands. The best way to combat this is through pollution prevention. It is better for the environment and more cost-effective to prevent the contamination of stormwater at the source. This concept has led to the development of the current stormwater regulations. The goal of the stormwater program is to reduce pollution entering Michigan's waters by implementing controls designed to prevent the contamination of stormwater runoff. At industrial facilities, some of the stormwater infiltrates or soaks into the ground. The stormwater that does not infiltrate runs off to surface waters or is directed to waters of the state through open or closed storm sewer systems. Surface waters of the state include rivers, lakes, streams, and wetlands. The surface water that receives the point source discharge is called the receiving waters. Identify the receiving waters at your facility. A point source is any discernible, confined, or discrete conveyance that discharges stormwater into surface waters. Examples of point source discharges include, but are not limited to, pipes, ditches, channels, tunnels, conduits, or anything that conveys stormwater into surface waters. In most cases, land graded to convey stormwater runoff across a piece of property would create a point source discharge of stormwater. At many facilities, stormwater is discharged from the facility into a municipal storm sewer system. It is important to understand whether the municipal sewers are separate or combined. In a separate sewer system, stormwater is kept separate from sanitary sewage and discharges directly into a surface water body. The sanitary sewage, which also may contain industrial wastewater, is directed to the local wastewater treatment plant where it is treated and then discharged. Permit coverage is needed when stormwater is discharged to a separate storm sewer system. In a combined sewer system, stormwater is combined with sanitary sewage and is directed to the local wastewater treatment plant. 
If all stormwater from the facility is discharged to the combined sewer system, stormwater permit coverage is not needed. However, after large storm events or during heavy snow melts, the volume of water entering the combined sewer system can be too much for the wastewater treatment plant to effectively treat. The stormwater runoff will be retained long enough to settle out the solids and to be disinfected. The nutrients and chemicals that are dissolved in the stormwater runoff and the smaller sediment particles that are suspended in the stormwater runoff will not be removed. Therefore, the stormwater runoff needs to be appropriately managed at the facility to reduce the impact on the surface waters. A person was selected by your management to be trained and certified by the DEQ to oversee the stormwater controls at the facility. This individual is known as the Certified Stormwater Operator. The Certified Stormwater Operator has a supervision over the facility's stormwater control measures included in the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. The Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, or Stormwater Plan, is a written plan intended to maximize the control of significant materials and to reduce the exposure of significant materials to stormwater runoff. The stormwater plan is designed to address the issues unique at your facility. The first step in developing a stormwater plan at your facility was source identification. A site map or sketch was prepared to adequately assess the facility. Once the site map was completed, the written portion of the stormwater plan needed to be developed. Take some time to look at the site map for your facility. The certified operator has to know what a significant material is in order to identify sources of significant materials. A significant material is any material that can degrade or impair water quality. Examples include, but are not limited to, soil, salt piles, raw materials, fuels and lubricants, solvents and detergents, wood and metal chips, plastic pellets, fertilizers and pesticides, food products, waste products, foundry sand, ash and slag, polluting materials, wastewater, and building materials. Identify the significant materials at your facility. Which significant materials are exposed to stormwater? While developing the stormwater plan, all sources of potential stormwater contamination were identified. The outside and inside of the facility was evaluated to determine the materials and practices that could be sources of contamination to stormwater runoff. Often, significant materials get tracked outside and are exposed to stormwater runoff by vehicles or employees. At your facility, the sources of potential stormwater contamination were identified. To address these potential pollutant sources, preventative measures and source controls were developed and implemented. Non-structural controls are practices that are relatively simple, fairly inexpensive, and applicable to a wide variety of industrial activities. These are activities undertaken by employees at your facility. There are eight non-structural controls required in the stormwater plan to prevent significant materials from coming into contact with stormwater runoff. They are preventative maintenance, comprehensive inspections, good housekeeping, material handling including spill prevention and response, sedimentation and erosion control, employee training, complying with total maximum daily load requirements, and a list of significant materials expected to be present following non-structural control implementation. Now let's discuss in further detail the non-structural control measures that you will be involved with at your facility. Preventative maintenance, good housekeeping, and material handling, including spill prevention and response. Preventative maintenance involves the regular inspection, testing, and cleaning of facility equipment and operational systems. These inspections will help identify and prevent conditions that could lead to breakdowns. This requirement may be incorporated into other preventative maintenance programs already being implemented at your facility. Preventative maintenance procedures include the identification of the equipment to be inspected, the tasks involved, 
and the frequency at which the tasks take place. Discuss the preventative maintenance program at your facility. Routine inspections are an integral component of the preventative maintenance program and are the responsibility of the certified operator. At most facilities, it is recommended that they be performed and documented at least once every two weeks. Routine inspections focus on areas that have a greater potential to contaminate stormwater. Routine inspections include housekeeping activity areas, preventative maintenance items, material handling areas, fueling areas, and other areas of concern at your facility. Good housekeeping practices are designed to maintain a clean and orderly work environment. The first step in preventing pollutants from contaminating storm water runoff is to use good housekeeping practices at your facility. Good housekeeping includes operation and maintenance procedures, material storage and inventory procedures, and employee participation. Good housekeeping practices or procedures are described in the storm water plan. These include the area where the activity is needed, the tasks involved, and the frequency at which the tasks will be completed. Housekeeping activities are often incorporated into the preventative maintenance inspection form. Special equipment that is utilized at the facility to aid in housekeeping activities are described in the stormwater plan. What are the good housekeeping procedures in place at your facility? Proper material handling and storage procedures can minimize the potential for the accidental release of materials that can cause contamination of storm water runoff. These procedures address both inside and outside material handling activities. Materials spilled inside are frequently tracked outside by vehicles and foot traffic. If your facility manages bulk liquids or other materials that have a potential to be spilled during loading and unloading activities, procedures were developed and implemented to minimize the possibility of spills. Extra care should be taken when handling materials around doorways, drains, and water bodies. Having material handling and storage procedures in place at your facility will decrease the potential for spills. The following are examples of ways you can prevent unwanted spills or releases of materials. Avoid storing liquids near drains. If liquids have to be stored near drains, provide adequate containment. Avoid storing items that have the potential to leak near drains or water bodies. Avoid storing flammable materials near heat sources. Avoid storing acids and bases near each other. Avoid stacking materials too high. Provide adequate aisle space for vehicle traffic. In high-risk areas where vehicle traffic is present, barrier posts are installed to reduce the potential for accidents. Proper labeling of material containers is necessary. Barrels and drums stored outside should be kept off of the ground. Critical materials must be in secondary containment. A list of critical materials can be found on the DEQ website. How are materials handled at your facility? Good material handling and storage procedures will reduce the potential for a spill. Spills and leaks together are one of the largest industrial sources of stormwater pollution and in many cases are avoidable. The developed spill response procedures are an important part of the material handling component of the stormwater plan. These procedures were established to help employees reduce accidental releases at your facility. Avoiding spills and leaks is environmentally and economically preferable to cleaning them up. Spill prevention and response procedures include 
identification of potential spill areas, material handling and storage procedures, detailed cleanup procedures which include the location of spill kits, cleanup equipment, identification of cleanup personnel, and phone numbers of appropriate personnel. A table may be used to indicate the location of spill kits, the contents, and where the detailed response plan is located. In the event of a spill or a release to the environment, follow the procedures developed for the materials at your facility. The spill response procedures are designed for your protection as well as the environment. Discuss the spill response procedures at your facility. It is important that you know your role in keeping the stormwater clean. The extra effort you take to keep your facility clean will help protect the surface waters that we all enjoy.